Rashad tweets, is there an actor or actress that you'd love to see in a superhero film that hasn't done one yet? My pick would be Angelina Jolie. She sort of has done one if you kind of if you want to consider wanted a little bit. She's mm-hmm. Tomb Raider. Kind Tomb of. Raider yeah. is a little bit. So I mean, if you're gonna call uh, Widow, Black Widow, a superhero, then I, I think you gotta kind of count Angelina Jolie as a superhero. Plus, she could bend bullets. Mm-hmm. I mean, in that. Um, I mean, we were just talking about one. Matthew McConaughey would be a great one. Yeah. But like I've said it, um, all the shoe cobbler, uh, greatest actor of all time. Uh, <laughs> Adam Day Day Lewis. Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis. Sh- and I want his name to be the shoe cobbler. <laughs> I, did, I, I want the greatest, probably the greatest actor of all time. I want him probably. That would be cool. But look, the thing is, the genre is so big now, so giant that we're no longer in the era where, oh my gosh, can you believe that this superhero movie got this amazing actor? Now all these amazing actors are lining up to be in them. So you're going to see them all at some point be there. But I would personally count Angelina Jolie as already done one. What about you guys? Well, I, I for me, it's, it almost happened for the one I wanted. That was Joaquin Phoenix. I really want to see Joaquin Phoenix do it. And, and it seems like it may happen soon, and it's almost in its Emily Blunt. Like Those are the two that I want to happen. I think Emily Blunt will wind up being... Captain uh, Marvel. Captain Marvel. And if that's the case, I'll be happy. But those are the two that I'm looking forward to. Dennis? I was going to do uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, but then he got cast then he got Doctor, <laughs> Doctor Strange. Tom Cruise hasn't done a superhero movie, has he? He's uh, a human being superhero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean, imagine him in one. I think, yeah. he, it, I think it would be He could play cool. Puck in Alpha Flight. <laughs> 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 I don't know. What are you, Josh? You got anybody? Um, I, would, I know he was circled for a while. I'd love to see Charlie Hunnam. In, in, a, in a superhero movie. I love Sons of Anarchy. I mean, you can't really consider Pacific Rim a superhero movie, but he's a great actor. He's, he's got a great look, and I, he's, I'm a fan. You know what I think he was actually good in that people aren't talking about is the the one that's Crimson Peak. Crimson Peak. I thought he was good in that movie, to be honest with you. Yeah. All right, what's next? Matt tweets, with Zoolander 2 coming out in less than four months, when do you think we'll see a new trailer? That's a really good question. It was supposed to come out February, right, Valentine? They keep, they keep showing that teaser trailer, the one yeah, with the which Stephen I thought Hawking I'm the voice. only person in the world who thought was awful, mm-hmm. and I'm I I don't know that anybody's You're not the only person. more looking forward to a Zoolander two than me, and I thought that new trailer was awful. Um, I don't know. They might be trying to avoid all this Star Wars swell, the Captain America swell, but. Uh, look, and we're still four months out. I mean, so it's, and it's a comedy. So we're not in any kind of place where we should be scratching our heads going, why haven't we seen a new Zoolander trailer yet? I mean, we're still a ways away, but I, gosh, I don't know when a good time to drop it would be. Christian, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, I, I know I'm a very unpopular opinion. Every time this to- topic's on, I don't care. I just don't. You should listen to your friend Billy Zane. He's a really cool dude. I just don't like. I just don't like <laughs> Zoolander. I never did. Um, I know you can yell at me. I get yelled at every time I say that. But uh, when's the movie supposed to come out? February. You know, I, I think you'll probably get it in December. I think another one will probably pop up in December, maybe early January when the toilet bowl season is. I think, yeah, early January. January probably because after that, the Star Wars rush yeah, is Yeah, because gone. when you have January, you're going to have... Because I am in the minority, and a lot of people are waiting to see that film. And when you have not a lot of movies that are coming out that people want to see in January, the, the, the trailers that will come out will almost overtake some of the big releases. And if there's a big trailer like Zoolander 2, then it makes sense. Any other thoughts? No, the only thing is I, I like the teaser. For a teaser trailer, I liked it. For a full trailer, no. I, I, I assume sometime in November, December. I love Zoolander, so, I mean, <laughs> I, it's going to be post-Christmas, I think. Early January, like you said, in that then that dead zone, just to get away from anything Star Wars, give it a little bit of a spotlight, but yeah. Okay, what's next? At Jared GNYC tweets, who determines what trailers get attached to what movies? How does that work? Wow, that's a really complicated question. It, a, a lot of it is the theaters decide what's gets because they're the ones who get the money. Uh, I know. Here's the thing: I actually wrote to one of the PR people at AMC Theaters this morning, asking this specific question because one of the questions I'm going to be taking on Mailbag this weekend. Somebody's asking is how can theaters bump out other movies to make room for more popular ones? Aren't there contractual obligations? And I wrote. So I wrote to AMC theaters and uh, one of the guys I know there said, hey, can you fill me in on this? Like, what's this process? And it was the biggest political non-answer I'd ever, <laughs> I had ever, ever got. And I, th- I, I got the same rumor out before, but I was like, hey, wait a minute, who really determines which trailers play where? Look, studios have influence, theaters make the decisions. Um, there's all, I think there's a very complex rotating wheel about how this all works, but it's not flat out the studio decides we're putting yeah. our film with this. The studio can decide we don't want to drop our trailer until a certain time. But once you release a trailer, then I think 
the, 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 I think the theaters have a lot of say in because they're the ones collecting the money. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you guys know anything uh, different? There's a company I forgot what, what's the name of the company that both Regal and AMC theaters. NCM. Yeah, I think so. They they kind of go with the, this. They talk to the studios and they talk to the theater. I chains. think that's pre. I think they just control everything. Oh, really? Pre-trailers. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think the trailers must be something similar to that. I've got nothing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, I don't work for a movie theater chain anymore, so I can't just get on the phone and get a more straight answer. It's a great question. It's a fan. It if you guys know more, if you can point us to an article that lays it out more, that would be a great one for you to do. Leave it in the comments section so uh, us and the rest of the viewers can find it. That would be great. All right, what's next? Jason wants to know if there's a villain that any of you actually side with. I love Apollo villains. Creed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I always, I'm like De Niro and Goodfellas. I always root for the bad guys. De Niro um, and Heat. Yeah, Sometimes I, I would root for it, De Niro. Just, and just Heat. because he's he's this the thing with De Niro, and you but you probably shouldn't be rooting for him. But mm-hmm. the thing is, the reason why he gets you is because it's business for him. Yeah. Everything that he's doing is business, and every move that he makes is business. And it's just his philosophies. I don't know. I, was, I always rooted for De Niro in that movie. People usually end up cheering for Hannibal. Uh, so, and I'm talking about the Anthony Hopkins movies. I'm not even talking about the new TV show. And I know a lot of people on the TV show cheer for Hannibal, too. Yeah. But, yeah. I did, can you think of any off the top of your head, Dennis? Uh, I mean, Fastbender is, uh, is uh, Magneto. Magneto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. I Especially in first class. Yeah. 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 All right. What's next? Mark tweets, what's the big deal about seeing any movie on opening weekend? Anyway, I'd much rather see it in two weeks after with fewer people around. It depends. I mean, look, that, that's not a crazy thing to say, but it really depends. There's there's two things that go into it. Number one, if it's a movie you are excited about, then there are two factors in here. Number one, you want if you're, you're excited about it, you want to see it as soon as you possibly can. I got a tub of um, a cookie dough ice cream in my freezer at home. I'm looking forward to the first opportunity I have. Not a bathtub. No, no, no. Not a bathtub. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the first opportunity I have to dig into that bad boy. It's the same thing with the, with the movies. Look, if you're looking forward to a movie and you're excited about it, you just can't wait to see it. The second part of that goes for the more hardcore of us movie fans is that we love seeing it with the most excited fans as well. The other fans who are as excited as us. I cannot imagine any place in the world I would rather be come December 17th <laughs> than in a movie theater with other loser psychopaths <laughs> like myself who have to see Star Wars opening night and I'm filled in a room with 600 other people just like that because the environment in that, it's going to be like you're at the Super Bowl. The environment, the atmosphere is going to be unbelievable. And so, look, for, for the average film fan, it's not a big deal. Unless it's a film you're really excited about, then those things. You do. So, other things that you, go into you that? Mentioned, you mentioned it perfectly. I think it's when people argue about why would I go to pay all that money to go see a football game when I can watch it on my 50 inch flat screen? Yes, your 50 inch flat screen is amazing, but there's nothing more exciting than when you score a touchdown with no time left and you're in the stands yeah. and you're <laughs> hugging men that you've never met before. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, there's just something about going to the movie on opening night, uh, especially a movie like Star Wars or a movie like Age of Ultron or any of these movies where every, like Harry Potter, when I was in the, stu- the theater for the last Harry Potter movie. Oh, I mean, that was well, it's just awesome. Yeah. And it's also the same question that I asked the viewer that wrote the question is that, is there a particular show that you watch, like say Game of Thrones or whatever it is that you have to watch it that night? Like there, because you could watch it on Netflix or HBO on demand, or whatever you wanted to do. You could watch it on your DVR later, but do you choose to watch it on Sunday when it airs? Because another thing is the age of the internet as well too. You might, depending on a big movie too. Like I know that I want, like if we don't get lucky enough to see a screening of Force Awakens, yeah. then I'm going to be off the internet. Yeah. I am not. I'm going to make sure until I go see that movie on Thursday night. I am not going to be looking at anything Your because they're going to be just no, they'll ruin it for you. That's what I'm saying, oh, yeah. and that's oh, yeah. and that's why. I mean, not not all movies. Like you're not if you mi- miss our brand is crisis on opening no. night, you're not going <laughs> to yeah, get spoiled. Yeah. But you know, but you know what I mean. So there are there are going back to what these guys said too. It's just like it, it's that experience of opening night of going to see it and being and it's something like yeah, I saw it already. Yeah, I saw yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, it's excitement factor and spoiler factor. Spoiler factor, I think, is secondary for me, but it's also a concern. You don't want anything spoiled for the, those type of movies. But excitement factor, people come dressed up. People are excited. People are ready, <laughs> ready to go. You know, and, and since everyone else is excited, then it gets you more excited, and it just kind of feeds off of. Yeah. It's like a comedy when when everyone's laughing, it's you're more likely to laugh. And so those big moments, let's say during Star Wars: The Force Awakens, when we expect to see something <laughs> happen, everyone's gonna go, ooh, yeah. ah, and then we're all gonna be. Oh, the there. opening yeah. crawl, people are gonna be yes. screaming and yelling. Yeah. 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 Well, it's it's, it's like the age of question. Do you want? Would you rather? Sit, 
I thought better than to tell that joke. So, what's <laughs> next? Uh, Tyler tweets, what's your favorite Halloween movie of all time? Oh, favorite Halloween movie of all time. I mean, that's... Like From the it, Halloween franchise or like an overall Halloween? Just, I think in like general. A, like a uh, scary <laughs> movie. Yeah, yeah like that because I honestly, I cannot remember which horror films came out on Halloween time and which didn't. I mean, so whenever you start talking about scary movies, my favorite of all time, I, I've said this a million times, American Werewolf in London, uh, of the last 10 or 15 years, probably be The Descent are, are the ones that I really love. Saw movies were great Halloween traditions for a while till they got really bad, but th those are really nice every year. Every Halloween, those came out. So I got, I I got Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and mm -hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Those are, those those two movies are, uh, are even though three turns into a little more of a comedy, it's still creepy movies. I'd watch The Shining. That's uh, my that's type of horror film. Uh, I said it last night. I'll say it, The Strangers. That's that mm. movie scared the hell out of me. All right, let's take about three or four more rapid style. Okay. Um, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this is Shanae's rapid style. Sorry. Um, the Twitter like refreshes and shoots you up to the top of the page. Okay, Matt tweets, what are some movies that you don't like but everyone else loves? I'm thinking this is probably off of your Zoolander thing. Yeah, uh, we've, we've actually got this question yeah. a lot, many, many, many times. You for Zoolander, yeah. uh, me is Blade Runner. Um, the one that everybody, uh, uh, Big Lebowski. Oh, wow. What? I'm shocked you don't like Big Lebowski. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think of things I don't like. There's a lot that I just don't like as much as everyone else, and it's like movies like Crash or The Artist or, you know, Big Lebowski is probably one as well. Yeah. It's just, it, I just don't yeah. get... doesn't resonate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amer American yeah. Hustle is one for me, too. Yeah. All right, what's next? Daniel tweets, I'm a huge fan. I was wondering, are we ever going to see a lightsaber fight on the scale of Anakin versus Obi-Wan? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I think it was too choreographed. I think it was too like it looks it kind of looks like a dance like yeah. it doesn't like it didn't seem real to me when I was watching it's like one one step step turn turn go it, it, and and plus the CGI with all the the lava and everything too I hate when you bring that up because you put me in the god awful position so that I actually it? have to defend something <laughs> from the stupid prequels you like that um, fight huh uh, I, I gotta say uh, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, except the only fight I did not like. A lightsaber fight was in the second film on the bridge of the ship when Anakin is fighting uh, Dooku, uh, Dooku for the second time. The camera angle shots that made so like it's from far away, blah, 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 then close up, close up of the face. Yeah. Boom, well, then, boom, and then and then the eighty an eighty-five year old man has a backflip off the. Off I, the top I of know, yeah. but anyway, Yoda was doing it too. Yeah. But I, for it's the Yoda. most part, in, in those god awful prequel films, I will actually defend the lightsaber fights. I thought they looked elegant. Where you call them choreographed, I don't disagree with you. But for me, that translate to me as elegant and movement and grace and yeah, I, I can't go into you can't go into the the lightsaber battle and just be like start whacking each other they no, have to no, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about, I'm yeah. talking about no, I know what you're yeah, talking, talking about I'm trying to make it make it look like again like when they when you see stuff I saw something online with it was like because someone had sent it to me of what the raid two actors might look like doing fights I want of course you're gonna get a choreographed fight I just don't want to feel like it's choreographed okay. like if you watch the raid two oh, just man. a fight in the kitchen it's clearly choreographed but I didn't feel like it was. I felt like those guys were kicking the crap out of each other inside of that kitchen. That's what I want to see. I want to see two guys going at it to where I don't like, okay, well, they've been practicing on that move. There's the spin. It looked cool, but it just, I felt, it felt choreographed. What, I, what I'm concerned <laughs> about is, okay, to have an epic battle, right? You have to have two people of equal skill level. And in this next movie, I don't see it. You can see Kylo Ren's going to fight John Boyega. I don't think they're at equal skill level. And, like, you know, if what happens, what you're thinking is maybe Luke Skywalker comes out, you know, in the forest to save John Boyega's Definitely. character. Definitely. He's a bitch slap some yeah. people. Yeah, he's going to kick his ass. So who, hmm. where's the equal? I think maybe... Snoke? That gets yeah, me so eight, excited. Though, I don't think Luke is fighting Snoke no. in seven. No, 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 no. Eight no, or nine no. or something like that, but not seven. All right, two more quick. Uh, Gabriel tweets, with Burnt coming out in the popularity of food-related TV, what is your favorite food-related movie? Well, I mean, a recent one that everybody Chef. loves is Chef. Yeah. yeah. Chef was really good. That uh, Thousand Mile Journey. Was that the Julia Roberts movie? No, the, he Hel uh, the recent uh, Helen Mirren. Eat, Love. Love. Yeah, yes. that was, that was Eat Pray Love. Yeah, Eat Pray Love. 100 Foot Journey, 100 Yard Journey, oh, right, journey. Right, yeah, right, with right. Helen Mirren. That was right. actually a really I nice little that. food. Yeah. I, I like what that one, What about the too? movie Spanglish? I know it's not all centered around food, but oh. San uh, Sandler plays a chef, uh -huh. and there's that one scene he makes that, that sandwich that's fantastic. Sorry, I, uh, Ratatouille. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I love that, and it's and it really is a foodie movie. You yeah, guys are forgetting all the, the the good one. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Julia Julia one uh, with Amy Adams? The uh, Julia Child one. Oh, Julia, oh, Julia. Um, Julia, 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 Julia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually yeah. a really good. Yeah. Movie. I, I like that, that one a yeah, lot. Yeah. All right, last question of the day. Hannah wants to know: Have we actually heard anything solid about the Beetlejuice sequel? 
Not in a while. No, yeah. other than, you know, um, uh, what's uh, Sister Hands actress? Uh, uh, Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder saying on Kimmel or something <laughs> like that. One, that's the reference. Uh, this, <laughs> what do you want me to say? She's Spock's, a, yeah. Spock's mom. Um, yeah. uh, other Mr. Than Deeds. Her being on, on Kimmel and saying, like, oh, I guess I can say he's told me we're doing it. But, I mean, other than that, nothing. And, and I'll be honest with you, I don't think they should make it, personally. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't know yet. And I think it goes back to what we were saying, too, with Bad Santa, too. It's like, I, I want to see Michael Keaton... Uh, play Beetlejuice again. I, I, I just want to, it's like going, again, using your band reference, it's like you go there, you don't think he's going to play that great hit ever again, and he does. Mm -hmm. And I want to see Michael Keaton do it again. Michael Keaton does anything, I'm in. He's from Pittsburgh, man. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.